Based on Lillian data, this is what I have learned are the most common things that we resist the most. In a nutshell, doing the work. Doing the work to me is doing all the things. Doing the work requires you to really show up for yourself fully. It requires you to show up for all five layers of your body. Now, of course, it's always a work in progress and nothing is perfect, but it's about effort. It's about intention. And that is really where a lot of us will end up bypassing or dropping the ball. Now let's chunk that down. Slowing down and reducing distractions. Taking care of the basics like food and sleep. Getting in the body and working out. Journaling and processing. Meditation and quiet time. It's almost like a progression. In order for you to do the work, you have to slow down and reduce distractions first. That way you can start taking care of the basics. Like you can't sleep if you're constantly running from one thing to another. If you're overloaded and double booked all the time, how are you even going to make time for meal prep? How are you even going to sleep eight hours a night? It's simple math. In order for you to do the work, you got to slow down and reduce distractions so that you can take care of the basics like food and sleep, and then eventually start getting in your body and working out regularly, which will also create time for you to journal and process, which will ultimately create more of a longing and a craving for meditation and quiet time. <laughs> Why do we resist the things that we need the most? First of all, fear. Fear is always at the top. Fear is everything. Fear is the number one thing getting in the way of you and your hopes and dreams and taking action and doing the work and showing up and all that. It all comes down to fear in all the ways. Fear of failure, fear of the unknown, fear of rejection, fear of judgment, fear of vulnerability. Two, addiction. Looking for love, aka dopamine, in all the wrong places. I'm not talking about just in the form of relationships. I'm talking about that in everything, whether it's food, whether it's numbing out, whether it's being reckless, whether it's just running away and traveling and being too busy. I mean that in all the ways, not just relationship love. I'm talking about workaholism, alcoholism. I'm talking about all of that. Survival. We're talking about survival mindset. We're talking about survival mode, aka scarcity mode. To me, scarcity mode is the same as survival mode. This is again where fear and survival overlap, obviously. Fear of losing identity, fear of losing your comfort zone, fear of losing control, fear of losing safety, fear of losing people. A lot of times we don't want to do the work because we're afraid of the relationships we're going to lose. We're afraid of our family rejecting us. We're afraid of people leaving us. We're afraid of the inevitable breakups that are going to happen. Friends drifting, gap of growth. Even though you know it's necessary and even though you know it's good for you, it's still scary. It's uncomfortable. It's out of your comfort zone. You're letting go of familiarity. And so, of course, your survival mindset kicks in. And it's like, but I need these people. Even though they're dysfunctional, I need people. If I lose them, then where will I belong? Right? So all these survival instincts kick in. Okay. So fear of losing identity, comfort zone, control, safety, people belonging, and obviously money. So a lot of times we resist investing in ourselves. We resist getting help. We resist hiring people. We resist doing the things that we need to do, like quitting our jobs or taking that leap financially or making that investment or buying that equipment that's going to help you chase after your dream or whatever right? But again, survival kicks in and it's like, oh, but what about this? And what if I don't make my money back? Or what if this is a bad investment? Or what if I'm going to lose out on this? And we focus more on what we're going to lose rather than what we're going to gain. Last but not least, programming. Attachment to outcome prevents action. Our programming makes us really attached to certain outcomes, our expectations, how things are supposed to be, how things are supposed to play out. Our attachment to wanting a certain thing or wanting a certain kind of outcome often prevents us from taking the action to make changes. So for example, let's say that you are attached to a certain outcome of buying a house by the time you're 35 years old. And so because you're attached to this outcome of like, oh, but what about this? I really wanted to have a million dollars by the time I was this age. And I really wanted to buy a house that I would before I was this age. So then it actually prevents you from taking action and like doing something for your creative endeavors or doing something that would actually help you grow personally. But all of your attachment to like how things are supposed to play out prevents you from taking different leaps, prevents you from doing the work, prevents you from doing things that would put you in a place of discomfort. Changing your life requires work. 
doing the work requires change. But then change can be scary because you have to go into the unknown and leave what is familiar and comfortable, even if we don't like the current situation, aka a relationship, a job, an old apartment, a title, a community, a city, whatever it is, a habit, a lifestyle, a programming, a mindset. Change can be serious because even though you know that you have to change your scarcity mindset to abundance mindset, you're still leaving what's familiar. Even though you know scarcity mindset is slowing you down, even though you know scarcity mindset is actually holding you back from limitless potential, it's still scary because you have to leave what's familiar. It's just that simple. It's the same reason why we stay in trauma bonds. It's the same reason why we go back to trauma bonds. It's the same reason why we stay in situations longer than we need to. All change, no matter how good it is, it's uncomfortable before it's familiar. Doing the work will come with many moments and spaces where you will feel like you are not in control or seeing any change at all. And that's what discourages you even more from doing the things that you need the most. Right when you're about to like tap out, Oh, like that's it. That's that critical opportunity. Like don't tap out, right? Like that's when it's about to pop off. Let's talk about fear of what will be uncovered. Doing the work and the self-discovery process, it's non-linear and it's keyword unpredictable. And this is where it's scary for people, right? Because we want control. We're all control freaks. We all want to know what's going to happen. And because it's very unpredictable, we don't want to do the work. There's no way to tell what will come up and how much work there needs to be done, even if you've been on the journey for years. You may discover things that you don't like about yourself. You may discover things that you don't like about your choices, your people, your friends, family, work, life, all that. And this would require you to confront even more change and decision-making, which can really be daunting. This is also why support, community, accountability, and compassion is key. <laughs> your old programming, it just wants to keep you safe, scared, and scarce. Because that's what survival is, right? Old programming is like one thing, survive. And so that prevents you from doing shit, taking risks, doing the work, exploring the unknown, changing your belief systems, trying something new. And so you can simply start by giving yourself permission. <laughs> Thank you.